Okay, gang, let's start to have a chat about confidence intervals versus confidence levels, because I think there's always confusion around this. So let, let's see if we can solidify these ideas. So there can be some confusion around the difference between a confidence interval and a confidence level. A confidence interval is a range of values that is likely to contain an unknown population parameter. All right, and we're estimating this parameter. So when I say, hey, we have a confidence interval, that's the things we've been doing in various examples where you have a comma, or not a comma, you have two numbers separated by a comma, but you have a low and a high number, right? So we'll say we think the parameter is between this number and this number. So in proportion land, it might look something like 0.43 to 0.48, right? So somewhere between 43 and 48%, that's where I think the parameter lives, the, the proportion parameter. Where in mean land, and again, I'm making these numbers up. Mean land, it can be anything. So maybe it's like 57. Ooh, that, that doesn't look like the greatest interval. All right, so let me just make up some numbers like 57.5 to 82.4, something like that. I have no idea what these units would be or what the context is because I'm just making numbers up. But that's the interval where we think the parameter, the population, parameter, if, again, in proportion land, we would think the true proportion was between 43% and 48%. Or if we were in mean land, we would think the true average mu was between 57.5 and 82.4, whatever those numbers would be. All right, so that's the interval, right? This is the range of values, all right? It is an interval estimate. All right, we always start with a point estimate, a statistic and then we add a margin of error to get to our upper bound, and we subtract a margin of error to get to our lower bound. So we start with one number, add a margin of error, upper bound. Take that one number, subtract a margin of error, lower bound. All right, but for level, if you draw a random sample many times, a certain percentage of the confidence intervals will contain that parameter. This percentage is the confidence level, but I wanna reemphasize that you have to repeat this process many times meaning you have to have many confidence intervals. So in this case, the confidence level is not the probability that a specific confidence interval contains the population parameter. So this level does not apply to this one individual confidence interval. It applies to the method. Again, it applies to if we repeated this process and drew random sample after random sample after random sample, and got confidence interval after confidence interval after confidence interval. A certain percentage of those confidence intervals contain the parameter and a certain percentage are wrong. All right, that, that confidence level does not apply to any specific confidence interval. All right, so this next paragraph is fun. It says the confidence level represents the theoretical ability of the analysis to produce accurate intervals. If you are able to assess many intervals and you also happen to know the value of the population parameter, which is something we rarely know. All right, for a specific confidence interval from one study, the interval either contains the population value or it does not, right? I've mentioned it's binary. You either got a good interval or you do not have a good interval. All right, there's no room for probabilities other than zero or one. And you can't choose between these two possibilities because you don't know the value of the population parameter. All right, so we very rarely know this. Right? So that's why on any individual interval, I don't personally know if this was good or bad, but those are my two options. This either contains the parameter or it doesn't. I just know if I repeated this process over and over and over again, and I got interval after interval after interval, then a certain percentage of these confidence intervals will contain the parameter. Okay, So I have this this fun little quote from the original developer of confidence intervals. And you can see that confidence intervals are, aren't actually that old, right? We only came up with them in 1937, so that's, that's not super old. Um, they're not even 100 years old yet. So the parameter is an unknown constant and no probability statement concerning its value can be made. So I can't say there's a 95% chance this one confidence interval is good. All right, it's either zero or one. All right, and this was Jersey Naiman, and he was the original developer of confidence intervals in 1937. So if you want a video that dives deeper into the difference between an interval and a level, there's a video here that I, I, I'm gonna include that link. 
Um, and then this video refers to an applet that's no longer available, but we're gonna go over, once I click out of this and go to my computer screen, I'm gonna show you how the confidence interval for proportions applet works and for means as well. And hopefully that'll solidify a little bit better what those, um, what those confidence levels mean. All right, catch you in a bit, bye. Hey Math43, I wanna give us a little bit more context as to what on earth a confidence level refers to. So if you're following along in your packet, click on this link. I'm gonna reduce that for right now. It's gonna take us to this website. And let's just set up so that I kind of match what's on the paper. I'm gonna take my population proportion down to 0.45. I think we had our confidence level at 95%. And then I think I also set my sample size to 200. Now, the numbers that I generate here won't exactly match the ones that are on the um, lecture key, just because um, I'm not gonna get the exact same numbers. This is a different time with me using the app. And, and also, you won't exactly match mine, which it's all fine. So I want you to imagine, we're gonna draw a sample of size 200 from our population, and the, the proportion that we're interested in, for some reason, we actually know the parameter that it's 45%. And in the real world, again, the only way to know that it's 45% is to actually run the census, but we're going to pretend we knew that. So taking a look here, it looks like my first confidence interval. Um, it looks like it landed at 40% for the sample proportion, right? But they had a margin of error of about 7%. So you can imagine 40 plus 7 got me up to 47%. You can kind of see that here on that x-axis. And 40 minus 7 would have been about 33%. So it looks like this particular confidence interval went from 33% to 47%, but you can see it went through that green line of 45%. So this is a good confidence interval. The parameter is inside my estimate. So let me do this again, all right? So this time I had a very different sample proportion. It was actually up at 47.5%. But you can see when I add 7% and subtract 7%, I'm staying, I, I, I cover that 45% mark, so that's also a good confidence interval. So I can continue to do this, and you see my sample proportions shifting, that's where those dots are, and here you finally see a bad confidence interval, which will happen, right? Our sample proportion was really low, so that when I added that margin of error, I didn't cross over my parameter, right? So you can see so far, even though I'm at 95% confidence, I've only gotten three out of my four intervals to work. So I can keep doing this over and over again, and you see those confidence intervals being created. I am repeating this process. So in repeated samples, and I can just continue to do this, right? We can see all 25 of those samples, they hit, they were all good, right? These 25 did not. You saw four of them actually missed, and it happens. But as I continue to do this, as I repeat this procedure time and time and time again, take a look at what that proportion or percent of success is. This number is getting really close to 95%. Because in repeated samples, and after sample, after sample, after sample, after sample, and I create interval after interval after interval after interval, about 95% of my intervals are good meaning they captured the parameter in that estimate, and about 5% are bad. And you can do this. I think this thing maxes out when you get like 9,900 samples. So you can continue to do this. But I'm actually not even that interested because I've got the law of large numbers on my side. I know that's how this is gonna play out. So, okay, that's what the confidence level has to do with. I don't know on any small scale if one individual interval is good or bad when I've constructed it and I'm looking at it. I just know that the method I've used to construct this estimate works about 95% of the time. So in repeated samples, I know about 95% of my intervals are good, meaning they captured the parameter. It was a good estimate and about 5% are bad. All right, so again, you can just kick this out till you're blue in the face. Again, it's not super interesting, and I'll, I'll stop doing that, but you can see I'm pretty close to 95%. All right, and that's what we saw happen over here. I think I actually did go um, pretty darn close. I got to, yeah, 9,900 samples when I did it, and it was about 0.945, so really close to 95%, okay? And so that was our look at 
proportions. Let's go try the same thing with means. So let me go light this up. All right, and let me head back over here. So I'm gonna do a confidence level of 95 with a sample of 75. And let's see what this looks like. So we got 95 and I'm gonna go sample size of, wait for it, 75, there you go. All right, and you can see the population distribution, right? That approximately normal curve, it's pretty spread out. And then you can see our sampling distribution, it's a lot less variable because if you remember from chapter seven, the standard error is smaller when you have a larger sample size, right? We keep taking that, that formula from chapter seven was take the standard deviation from this guy, all right? And divide it by the square root of N. That's why you see it getting that much smaller. All right, here we go. So let's see, I took my first random sample of 75, right? You see all those little data values. And they said, well, the mean is right here, okay? And that's, that's looking pretty good, all right? And then you can see here, this random sample, it looked like maybe I had an outlier up here. It, it sent my sample mean here, because the sample means are wherever the dots are. But you can see on my confidence interval, even though my sample mean was here, I, the lower bound just crossed over that green line. So that was a good confidence interval, right? This one was, the, the sample mean was right on the money here. All right, here, again, the sample mean is looking, again, right on the money. Because even though you had these, these, large, these large low numbers and these large high numbers, they kind of balanced each other out, right? So there's the sample mean, add a margin of error, subtract a margin of error, but I still, I covered the green line, which is my population mean. So let me do 25 of these. So, so far, this is all looking pretty solid, right? I'm hitting it 100% of the time. All right, now we ran into some problems. You can see my sample mean here was a little bit high. So when I headed out, when I got to my lower bound of my confidence interval, it didn't quite, quite pass over the green line. And here, my sample mean was really high. So you see it's just missing on all fronts here. And that's taking me to about a 95%, excuse me, 94%. Um, confidence or ninety four percent of my intervals are good so far, even though I'm running at a confidence level of ninety five. I'm a little under that, and that's fine. This law of large numbers gets me to ninety five percent, not the law of small numbers. And I've only done this fifty three times. So let me keep running these, and you can see I'm getting yeah, this is pretty good interval, but a uh, pretty good batch. One of them missed. Okay, if I do another one, pretty good batch. One of them missed. So I can continue to do this. Right, and you can start to see where is my percent or my my success proportion. It's at ninety five percent, and that's not by accident. That's what the ninety five percent confidence level is referring to. It's saying if you take sample after sample after sample after sample, and create interval after interval after interval after interval, which is exactly what I'm doing here. Right, I'm making a ton of intervals. About ninety five percent of them will cover that green bar, that parameter, and about 5% will miss. So again, you can do this for as long as you want. I think the app will um, kick out at around 9,900. And you can click on any of these and see your individual um, data values. But that's what we got going on here. All right, so initially when I ran mine, um, when I screenshotted it for your lecture key, you see I was at 92%. But then I maxed that bad boy out. I went to 9,900. I clicked on it for quite some time. All right, and then you see 95% of my intervals contain the population parameter. And that's what the confidence level has to deal with. All right, so I hope that helps a little bit with what I'm talking about when I say confidence level. It means if you've repeated this procedure, 95% of your intervals will capture the parameter and about 5% will miss. And you don't know, when you're creating your own confidence interval, you don't know if you have a good one or a bad one. You just know the method you're using works about 95% of the time. All right, thanks gang, bye.